What is up and welcome back to Talking Nutrition. Today we are back with another bonus episode. We're going to break down the three Q&A sessions we did during a mini challenge we did with our free community. If you are not a member yet, you can dive in. I'll drop the link in the show notes. It's a free Facebook group. We want to drop a bunch of stuff in there for your resources, mini trainings, a lot of cool stuff. And of course, the challenges, you'll be the first to know if we are launching any events, webinars and all that good stuff. So go ahead in the show notes. You'll find that link to our Facebook group, a couple of questions. No strings attached. It's really just extra help because once again, we, we kind of know that nutrition gets a little overwhelming and especially when it comes to training, there's so many different opinions and there's mindset work, which is really the foundation, right? So we're going to dive in for the next six Thursdays in a row. We'll be breaking down the Q&As starting with two episodes on nutrition then two about training and then two on all things mindset. Enjoy. Celia so says, hey, in periods, I don't sleep a lot. Uh, life with a toddler, <laughs> something a lot of our clients go through. Um, so what's a good rule of thumb when it comes to decide whether to do strength training or swap it with some light movement, like a walk or uh, Pilates? Uh, I never know how to pronounce that one. Pilates <laughs> in times where I've already slept a little, uh, sorry, where I've already slept little and there's no guarantee that the following night will be any better. Um, okay. So it depends. I think it's going to depend largely on the level of exhaustion, I guess. How tired are we? Is it like a, I don't know, did we have a three hour night? Or was it maybe more like five, six, right? Do we feel a little tired? Or do we really feel like, hey, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna chill and maybe even sleep more to, or maybe even take a nap, right? Um, there's there's a, a good reasoning for both. Because here's the thing. I would say if you're completely just done and you know, you're know you not gonna have a great workout, you feel like crap and maybe doing the workout and maybe not having as much time to kind of wind down and, you know, kind of chill might make it worse in the long run. On the other hand, if it's a little bit of a lack of sleep, I believe there's actually a bit of research even to show that it may be a good idea to go anyway. Will it be optimal for muscle growth, recovery, those kind of things, performance even? Probably not, but that's okay, right? Like a lot of times, and this is one thing too, we need to listen to our bodies. But then again, I also think that we also shouldn't take it too far to where Hey, if we go into the gym anyway, feeling a little tired and we get moving, a lot of times we're going to feel better. We're going to feel better in general, like physically. We're going to feel more fresh even sometimes. Plus, we're going to feel good because we went to the gym and we showed ourselves like, hey, even though it didn't feel amazing, I wasn't super motivated, I still went. And you know what? I had a pretty decent workout. So there's a lot of value to both. You know what I mean? Um it's a tricky one because, of course, we don't coach together. And it's like with with a lot more context, I would have more specific, you know, answers for you. Um, but if sleep is an issue, I would say if you're super tired, feel free to skip it. If you are like a little tired, try to get some, you know, lift your weights. You know what I mean? Like have some fun and then see how it goes. And hey, then maybe even if you're like, hey, you know, I still went anyway, but I felt like crap. Okay. Take a rest day next day. Also, as you know, especially with a toddler, and you know, like I said, we have a lot of, I would say like almost most of our clients are, have kids. It's like, it's a big responsibility, of course. It's going to take a lot of your time and, and, and focus and those kind of things and energy, of course. Still making sure that you prioritize yourself. And this is easier said than done. I know that, right? But still making a point of prioritizing yourself, whether that's 30, 60 minutes at the gym for yourself or even shorter, right? will allow you to show up better in life, at work, with your kids, with your partners, your friends, whatever it is, right? So there's a lot of that as well to where, hey, we're still showing up. We're improving our fitness. And when we are mentally, physically, physiologically like healthier, we show up as a better person. So keep prioritizing yourself. That's the long story short. Um, I think a lot will be trial and error too, right? seeing how you do reflect maybe at the end of the week. Hey, maybe address sleep. Like, can we maybe introduce a bit of a nap? The 10 minutes of stillness, right? Hey, you could literally like get a sleep mask. And I did this yesterday for 20 minutes. Sleep mask, timer, boom. And I just lie down in bed for 10 minutes or sorry, yeah, 20, just to kind of right recharge. It does a lot. Even if we don't fully fall asleep, try it out. Napping is actually very, like it's, it's not the same as like one, you know, long stretch of sleep, but it's like, Good second best, you know. Alrighty. Uh, Jill says, <clears throat> I've been following a strength training program for the past 16 months. Awesome. Uh, PS Stagra Athletic App. Cool. 
So the thing is, I would like to improve my running. How can I best combine strength training with cardio? Should my strength training be focused on upper body muscle gain and leave the lower body on maintenance in quotes, uh, strength, let me see real quick. Oh, sorry, one maintenance strength session per week. I'm in my 40s, by the way. Um, I mean, first of all, awesome that you're staying active. I, th I think we should be active in our 20s, 30s, 40s, like always. It's a great work following that for 16 months. I mean, honestly, even just that, like that shows that you're continuously showing up and you, you know, that's something that you do. And I love that because that's something a lot of people do. Like generally speaking, if you think about it, guys, like we are like the weirdos who are into fitness. You know what I mean? Like a big part of the world is not really into that. And I feel like there's a good shift happening and more people are lifting weights. But just the fact that, hey, like you guys are like, you're lifting your weights and stuff. Amazing. Love that. So you would like to improve your running. And this kind of goes back to um, Stephanie's question where she said, hey, strength or muscle gain. Where I even mentioned, hey, we could even have a cardio you know, a season. Same kind of thing here. I don't necessarily think that you would have to sacrifice the lower body training stuff. However, then on the other hand, I do think more focus should probably go to running. And I have a lot of CrossFitters too. And it's like, sometimes people want to do everything. CrossFit, running, muscle gain. We cannot prioritize all at the same time, you know? So kind of going back here, for example, because you want to keep your strength, you want to, you know, build some muscle, but you also want to improve that cardio. So let's say for the last 16 months, like you're like, let's say there's a graph here, right? So this is 100%, this is like 0%. <laughs> let's say um, for the past 16 months, it's been up here, right? You're training strength, you're focusing on that. Okay, cool. And maybe cardio has been low, whatever it is. Maybe because you now want to improve your running, which by the way, guys, for everyone here, there's a lot of good research too for training different energy systems which is why I mentioned low intensity cardio, maybe even doing some high intensity, right? Doing different, different kinds of modalities, different kinds of sports, even training different energy systems in the body seasonally to where, Hey, okay, maybe you were here with your strength training cardio here. If this comes up, this will likely have to go down. How much that needs to happen is going to be individual. But what I will advise against is training like six, seven times a week. That's going to be too much because now we're not recovering anymore. Now we might be putting too much stress on the body as well. So that is where you would want to lower your strength training to make some room, if that makes sense, for cardio, right? Now, how much you want to do that is going to depend on how much you really want to get into running. Is it a little bit? Is it I want to do a marathon? Okay, now we should probably shift to something where, hey, running is up here and we're doing some uh, strength training to kind of maintain that muscle. Make sense? So the only thing I want to point out here is make sure that we're not doing too much. Make sense? And then, of course, with that, nutrition is going to be key. If we're doing both, you want to fuel for that. You want to eat for that. Make sense? Deborah says, I currently have a severed hamstring injury. Training is not an option at this point, but uh, they said I would walk or anything that was low key, such as walking. Any suggestions? They said an elliptical, as long as it's flat and not inclined but most are electric and seem to be pretty fast paced and need something a little more fun than plain walking. I feel you. Um, walking is really good though. So let me, let me first make a, a case for walking because there's so much to it. I literally just wrote a post about this yesterday, but like walking is, is such an underrated tool for fitness, for health, for everything, longevity. It's not just about the steps. It's not just about the calories. You are, directly lowering cortisol we're lowering stress hormone right the 10 minutes of stillness right time with yourself sitting with your thoughts you can do that when you're walking um we feel better in general like we might get some fresh air we might get some sunlight like there's a lot of benefit to that doing a short 10 to 20 minute walk after your meal can improve digestion blood sugar regulation so you see i understand because i know and i know where you're coming from because if we're training normally and now we get injured and now we have to do something that's only walking, I get it. I get it. However, I will say this, the health benefits to doing some low intensity walking, especially when you're injury, sorry, when you're healing from an injury are massive, right? And then of course we can bring it up. That's your question, of course, right? It's going to depend on what they say is okay. 
I would say that cycling is really good. Like if you can get a stationary bike or maybe even go to the gym and do some cycling there, amazing. I don't know if rowing would be a good option. Um, I've seen people do a lot of swimming also, like after, sorry, like after injury during recovery, but it really depends on type of injury and what you are, you know, okay to do basically by the doctor. Um, elliptical could work, you know, could work. It just really depends. Uh, you're right, because some are electric. Like I'm, I'm not fully sure there. I'm not the fully. I'm not the most experienced with elliptical. Um, but I would say I would still do a lot of walking. To be honest with you, I know it's not the most fun, but again, we can make it fun. We can even stack it with, you know, doing something. We can stack it with calling our friends. We can have, you know, go on a walk together. We can, you know, acknowledge the the health benefits and just do it for that. Even acknowledging that. It improves mental health. It lowers stress in the body, those kind of things. Um, if you still don't love it, maybe it could be a great moment for an audiobook. It could be a great moment for a good podcast. And maybe it's just that you time that you also deserve because I know you're super busy as well, right? Um, because, you know, Deborah and I, we're, we're coaching together. We know that stress is a factor in life. Walking is one of the best things you can do to lower stress, you see? Now, so I would say mostly walk still but then also do some um stationary bike like it works great you know that's that's a low impact one like that's probably a very safe one too um and anything else i would really clear that with them but again like you can make walking more fun make sense Isolin says i can't motivate motivate myself to do deadlift squats and bench press i know they are great exercises so am i missing out a lot my answer might surprise you um if i want to build muscle and strength I could do almost anything else, but these three are so hard to do alone at the gym. I think they're overrated in general, not against them. Don't get me wrong. But no, I think knowing, yes, they are big compound movements. We should be doing some type of hinging. We should be doing some type of squatting. We should be doing some type of pressing, but it doesn't have to be that lift squat and uh, bench press. It doesn't have to be. Especially the factor that you mentioned here that you feel like it's hard to do it alone. And you're like, hey, can I do something else? Absolutely. There's a lot you can do that will get you to train those similar movements or sorry, the similar, you know, muscle groups without doing those exercises. Um, this goes back to, cause you mentioned too, like I can't motivate myself to do it. Sure. I could give the answer of like, you don't need motivation. You just need to be disciplined. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, true. We do need to build discipline and we do sometimes need to go back to the walking, right? We sometimes need to do things that are just good for us so that we can get the benefit and then we will start to like it. But if currently it's not something you're really excited about, does it increase or decrease the chances of going to the gym? You know what I mean? So this is where, first of all, I would say try again on the program. Um, try maybe not to put together something yourself because I think we tend to overthink it. I'm saying this from a place of like, hey, that's what I do as well, right? I get a coach for that reason, <laughs> you know? Because I want someone to do it for me. And by the way, most gyms usually come with a free PT session, I think, where you might even be able to get a program, right? And there's so much online too, but other movements you can do. I mean, absolutely, right? If you want to build muscle and strength, I mean, you, dumbbells are great. You know, I would even say like for some, for the muscle growth, like let's say, depending on how much we want to build chest, if we can get a deeper stretch with the dumbbells, like I would go for that one over bench press. Because bench press is not really a great movement for muscle growth. Deadlift, also not really. Squatting, that's a good one. But then again, can we do a leg press? Can we do a hack squat? Can you do some squatting in a Smith machine, maybe? Really good one. You can get really, really like controlled. Um, some Bulgarian split squats. If you do those, I mean, they're, they're killing. You know what I mean? Get some straps, right? Use uh, heavy dumbbells. Great exercise. Um... Even with, you know, um, deadlifts. I mean, there's Romanian deadlifts you can do with a dumbbell. Um, there's other things too that we can do, right? Just generally thinking, okay, if I go to the gym, like what's available, which muscle groups do I want to train? Like, I think there's always going to be great alternatives. Makes sense. But the easiest thing to do, honestly, would be looking up a program. And you can probably find an affordable one online. We have some general ones that I'm happy to send over if you would like to check them out. So just message me about that. Um, I would, I would, if you have the possibility to do so, the option, 
I would try to have someone else or like an app or something, just make it for you. And then you can, of course, tailor that to what's available, you know, but making clear, like, hey, I don't want to do a down squat and bench press. There's so many things you can do with cables, with, with free weights, right? Like so much stuff that will maybe be more fun even, that will then maybe increase motivation and you have more momentum and then you're off to the races. And hey, maybe down the road, you will do some squatting. Maybe you will do some bench, right? But it doesn't have to be in there. I love the exercises, but again, I do think they are overrated for many people because <laughs> we're also not power lifters. We don't have to get good at those big three lifters. So much more. All right, Elisa says, what is a good rest day? I have two of them during the week, but I struggle with not doing too much when it comes to movement and general stress, you know, working kids. Uh, I want my rest days to give me the benefits, but I so times, or but I sometimes wonder if they don't. How do you know? It's a good one. I don't think we'll, we'll really notice if that makes sense <laughs> in quotes um in terms of in the moment however long term it's the thing that will allow you to progress if we don't take our rest days we're not going to build that muscle we're not going to build strength we're going to plateau um guys i can't tell you how often i've had this where someone comes to me training six seven times a week and they feel like they're never progressing they can build muscle guess what we do we introduce more rest you know what happens they build more muscle, they get stronger. And there's no magic. It's really just, hey, here we're always stressing the body and never recovering and not repairing. And on this side, with the rest days, there is parasympathetic days, right? And it's not just like you're not just in stress or, you know, rest and digest all, you know, one day to the next, but just saying like, here we have more time in rest and digest. We have more time where you're not using that muscle that needs to rebuild, recover, by the way, nutrition is a huge one there. So I would even argue that depending on where you're at, like if you don't notice the benefits, maybe a nutrition thing, maybe a sleep thing, it's really difficult because it's not just a rest day, you know, um, or difficult without context. It's sleep, it's nutrition, it's so many other factors, protein, calories, right? Um, but the rest days are going to be the thing that will allow you to get better. Makes sense? Because... Training is a stress and adaptation game. If this is your baseline and you exercise, you actually get worse in the moment. Temporarily, that's normal, right? We get worse. Then afterwards, right, if we recover sufficiently, we'll go back up and then we establish a new baseline that is now higher. That's how we get stronger, faster, we build muscle, etc. However, if we're always pushing, and we get a little worse in a moment, but we only kind of recover, like not that much, we might actually lower that baseline. We might even get worse, you see, because fatigue adds up. Fatigue adds up, the body needs time to recover. And that is why having two rest days um, are going to be essential, I would say. Now, if you want to make one more like an active rest day, I would, I would absolutely do that. I don't think you need to fully rest both days, but at least one where you don't do any training, that would be huge. Um, on the other day, I don't know, go for a swim, go for a nice long walk, something like that. But the goal is not to stress the body too much. Going back to walking, that's one of the biggest things. You are burning more calories. You are doing more physical activity, right? It's good for so many things, your blood markers, those kind of things. But we're doing that without the added stress response, you see? So it's without increasing cortisol, we even lower cortisol. Make sense? And says, are two strength training sessions a week? Let me see real quick. Because that's a big sentence. Are two sessions a week, Mark Ripto's training, starting strength method, three sets of five, barbell squats, press, deadlift, and bench press together with a daily step count of 10K and some hiking in the mountains or gravel road bike tours at the weekends enough? If my main goal is healthy lifestyle, fitness level, body weight, or should I do more structured training in general, consisting of strength and endurance sessions? That's a big one. Let me see. We have to, the program. So three sets of five. And then you have those movements. So we have the big compound movements, as well as a step count and some hiking in the mountains, as well as some biking. I would love a little bit more context in terms of how it's set up, but I'm going to go off of this. So I think all of the compounds here are good, right? We're doing daily movement. We're, you know, we're hitting our 10K steps. We're getting some hiking in, so you're getting out of nature. I just put out a blog recently on the benefits of that, so that's even more of a benefit for your mental health and lowering cortisol and immune system and stuff. Um, 
the bike tours are great. I love that as well. And I know you really like your endurance stuff, right? And being fit. You did also mention fat loss, right? The body weight in this case. Would this be enough or good? Or should you be in a more consistent kind of strength and endurance program? I think, first of all, it would be getting clear on the main goal, the priority right now. I think the, the steps can be there. First of all, I think you should be getting out of nature. Absolutely. I think when it comes to endurance and training, sorry, the endurance and strength training, I would approach that seasonally and look at, hey, what do I want to do right now? I can tell you this. Knowing how much, I mean, people in general, but I mean, 75% of our clients are female. Knowing how much focus and pressure there is in terms of like dieting and being lean and those kind of things. I, I always wonder, like, how much time have we spent actually actively trying to put on muscle, feeding the body up, eating enough, getting all the, the calories in, the macros, the micronutrients, and really just making sure we get all the good foods in? That would be huge. Um, and that being said, strength training would be an amazing combination there. So now we're going to build muscle. The body, like, it'll build muscle when it can't, like, when it has the resources. Muscle takes a lot of calories to build, resources to build. It is expensive tissue to have. It burns more calories. So it's almost like from a survival standpoint, it almost doesn't necessarily make sense to build energy expensive tissue if there's not enough food coming in. So, and of course, there's more nutrition, but like it, it always goes hand in hand. I would say what's likely going to be a good one because you're, you're mentioning fitness level of weight and stuff. Either way, what I do with all of our clients is first making sure, hey, we feed you up. So I would even go here probably for like a strength training focus season to where we speed up as well. We really try to push that maintenance calorie range, really try to find that. Having some endurance on the side of that, absolutely trying to keep up both. And depending on your schedule, I don't know, maybe you want to do, again, like maybe three to four strength training sessions, maybe one or two cardio. It really just depends what you want to prioritize. But building some muscle going potentially into a cut at some point, maybe two or three months, kind of depending on how lean you want to get, um, going back up. And then maybe the next time you're going to do maintenance, maybe do more of like an endurance kind of season, right? Maybe you could even align this with the, the actual seasons, right? Summer, et cetera, right? Hey, maybe winter is a great time to put on some muscle. Maybe summertime, we want to be outside more. Hey, maybe we're going to go on more bike tours, you see? So those are all great things to keep in mind. And I think periodization is going to be super, super key there as well. Um, feel free to, to shoot me some follow-up questions and comments there as well, because I know I need to kind of give like general answers here. Um, and I hope that helps. But I think generally speaking, it sounds good. But long-term, having a structured program based on the season you want to be in is going to be key. Because a lot of times we want to do everything all at once, right? <clears throat> Last one for today. Um, also, guys, right, the things that are mentioned in the Foundation's crash course, which, by the way, you have access to, right, aka the slides I wanted to pull up today, we basically touch on it. There's one more thing I wanted to do. So real quick, so Karina, how many days should one do strength training and how many days should I want to do cardio during the week? I like to combine and do both strength and cardio once a week, but I notice that I need quite a long time to recover. Is it worth it? Or should I separate the two? Generally speaking, um, if we do the same thing, or if we do both on the same day, I should say, then whatever the second workout is will suffer, typically. We've already used up a lot of fuel, a lot of resources. In my experience, a lot of people are not properly refueling even in between. So going into that second season, we might already just start on low, low tank, right? That's okay. If that works for your schedule, it's not a bad thing per se. However, what I would say is, again, going back to priorities, I think also understanding that, yes, guys, and by the way, it doesn't have to be either or either. It's like, if you really want to do both, you can do both, but both will just not be fully optimized. Make sense? It's like, hey, optimize this side, optimize this, this side, or kind of do pretty good at both. That's also one option, you see? So going back to things being individualized. Um, now, I think um, it's hard to say, generally speaking, how often you should do strength training, in my opinion, strength training long-term will be the best investment you can make in your long-term health. Having that muscle takes a long time, right? Cardio, you don't have to do as much to get those benefits. You know what I mean? Um, I hope that makes sense. Like even like ideally, depending like depending on what's possible, I would say like three at the very minimum, like 
ideally four to five maybe weight sessions um let's say maybe four in this case and then maybe one or two cardio for example uh, could be really nice and then sometimes if you want to do it at the same day cool if it's right after the other one usually not going to be a great workout if you can maybe split it up maybe do a little a short cardio session in the morning weights in the evening that could really work but it depends on your schedule too and of course like address this with your coach too and uh, we can help you with this now that being said guys we are coming up on time but i wanted to do one more thing and that is also in the foundation scratch course that you guys have access to um as a little bonus now that being said the main thing to move is not burning calories we are lowering risk of metabolic syndrome heart disease diabetes cancers even chronic diseases we're improving cardiovascular health right it's going to help you manage your weight muscle growth strong bones and the list goes on your hormones brain function right by the way we didn't even touch on mental health here when you do your training right it's going to improve brain function even improve mood so important for you immune system but the biggest one i wanted to leave you off with today is understanding that working out is a long-term investment i have a little beautiful graph here as well which kind of looks crazy but it's from a study by the way guys if you want to look up the study the pubmed idea is right here but this is people's metabolic sorry people's metabolic rate based on age there does not seem to be a slowdown between the ages of 20 and 60 before it kind of i mean when we're born right it goes ways up and then kind of down between 20 and 60 the metabolism does not really seem to slow down because of age it can slow down and for a lot of people it does but it's not because of age and by the way also even here it sees, seems to slow down just a little after 60 years old but it's only slightly only slightly you know what the main thing is why most people's metabolism does seem to slow down as they age it's less physical activity it's less muscle on their bodies going back to muscle being a very energy expensive tissue right people have less muscle mass they're burning fewer calories right they're sedentary they're not working out they're not getting their steps in that is why most people tend to slow down their metabolisms by the way let's throw on top of that the fact that people are not eating enough protein generally speaking people are overly focused on dieting all the time which will tank your metabolism too that's why i speak so much about muscle gain phases maintenance phases right pushing those calories up like you got to do that for your metabolism all those reasons i just mentioned right are such a good reason to to keep in mind of hey we got to move you know what i mean like you got to build a muscle you got to do your cardio you got to do what it takes now because you might be in your 20s 30s 40s 50s whatever it is we have some clients in this, in their 60s and by the way they are also still building muscle right they are still doing the work when we do this stuff now you might not even think about this like i'm 34 right I'm, i don't even consider okay like you know you know my 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 70 year old self when i'm like hey i want to build muscle or i want to look lean like we tend to not think about this stuff but i think we need to remind ourselves still that hey like that stuff eventually will matter and that's why i think general movement doing some cardio lifting your weights should be something that we all practice and i understand that people are all busy people are all dealing with real fucking life where you're you're running around all the time you're stressed whatever it is but if we can make a point of doing these things we can really set ourselves up for success long term that goes for your mental health physiological health physical health like everything all across the board cool great q a session amazing questions thank you so much once again for submitting and i will talk to you in the next one which will be tomorrow and that will be already our last q a so that will be mindset 